Birmingham Seaholm Maples had a respectable second place finish in their division last year, but have lost many players to graduation. This year, Seaholm has won their first two games, but lost last week to division rival Berkeley. The Royal Oak Kimball Knights have also lost key players from last year to graduation, and to make matters worse, have a tough schedule to conquer. Last year, they were undefeated, but this year, Kimball is already 0-3. Tonight, it's an Oakland Activities Division II contest as the Seaholm Maples take on the Kimball Knights on the TCI Sports Game of the Week. TCI Sports High School Football Game of the Week. Tonight from Kimball High School, it's the Seahome Maples taking on the Kimball Knights. Hello again, everyone. Dave Zorin along with Joe Abramson here at uh, Kimball High School, a very soggy and flooded Kimball High School, Joe. Yeah, and that's going to limit the passing game and the kicking game. Heck, it'll probably limit the running game as soft as that field is right now out there. Okay, how does this weather affect these teams tonight? You've uh, you've uh, heard a little bit about these teams and uh, their uh, offense and defense. How's that going to affect them? Well, both teams are relatively balanced. Seaholm in the past has liked to throw a lot. They're starting a sophomore quarterback, so they're more of a running team than in the past. But one of their big strengths is their kicking game. They got Dave Schaefer, generally considered the best kicker in the state of Michigan. This guy's got 56, 60 yard range in practice, made about 15 field goals in his career. I don't know what kind of range he's got in this kind of weather, so a close game like that could really hurt him. Okay, let's take a look at the weather conditions that we have here for tonight's game, and uh, it's not going to be helpful. Uh, it is. Uh, it has rained already, downpours all day long, and we're still headed for some more rain as the, the clouds are moving in right now. Yeah, and it's humid too, which is going to make the the wetness stay on the ground a little longer. It's just going to be a tough game all night for both teams. Okay, we'll be back with tonight's kickoff right after these messages. Stay with us. The TCI Sports Game of the Week is brought to you by Modernistic Carpet Cleaning. Comet Burgers in Royal Oak. Buy one burger, get one free when you mention TCI Sports. Mike's Market Share Coupon Book. And by Bell Tire. I'm the king. The rock and roll? No coupons. I'm Mike Gauthier. Some people call me the king of coupons because nobody brings you bigger savings than my market share coupon book. Having trouble saving money? Then do what the Trip family does. Carry the book, Mike's market share coupon book. You'll save thousands on things you use every day, like eyeglasses, oil changes, and cleaning from companies you trust. But you can't save unless you carry the book. Remember, you'll save a king's ransom using my market share coupon book. Rumor has it, Comet Burgers is definitely the place to be seen in downtown Royal Oak. After the party, out for dinner, just looking for cold soft drinks, great burgers and fries, milkshakes or pizzas. Comet Burgers is the place to run into just about anybody. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Even old what's his name. Comet Burgers, they're out of this world. When you call Modernistic, we'll show up with this. $35,000 worth of carpet and upholstery cleaning technology. Call the competition, they'll probably show up with this. Our truck mounted equipment can professionally clean your carpets with 10 times the power of portable cleaners, removing dirt, harmful bacteria, pollens, and more. The competition can. Of course, there is one thing the competition does that we can't. They make a lot more noise. Modernistic. store guy says great deal on them tires you want valve stems no thanks your tires won't work without valve stems they're extra then he told me all the other extras i needed so guess what happened to my great deal on them tires only bell tire gives you out the door pricing you get the guaranteed lowest price and at bell tire it's the total complete everything's included price with absolutely no extras ever bell tire nobody comes close nobody's closer Welcome back to 
Kimball High School for the TCI Game of the Week. Dave Zorin along with Joe Abramson here for the kickoff of tonight's game. Let's take a look at the record so far for these teams. Last year, they were 4-1 in the conference, 7-2 overall for Seaholm. Kimball 9-0, 5-0 in the conference, and a very good records for both teams. Both playoff qualifiers. Yep. This, this uh, season, Seaholm 1-1, 2-1 and one, and one overall. Kimball 0-1 oh in the conference, 0-3 oh overall, but a very, very <laughs> tough opponents in those three opponents. We'll talk about it as the kickoff by Schaefer goes deep and taken there by Sitterlet. Sitterlet cuts up, finds a hole, and over the 20, out to about the 23, 20, well, out the 24-yard line. So a good return by Sitterlet as he uh, had the ball deep in his own territory. Well, there. and that's something rare. Dave Schaefer, uh, that was his 12th kickoff this year, and that's only the third time it wasn't a touchback. Again, this, this is a guy who had a 50-yard field goal last year. He's missed three all season. The distance on the misses, 54, 52, and 47 yards. He doesn't miss short ones. But that shows the kind of confidence they have that they let him try those 54-yard field goals. The quarterback for the Kimball Knights, Kanarski. Dion Kanarski. Out of the I formation, Sitterlet, the tailback, gets it. Uh, on the first play from scrimmage, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage. So for a loss for the first down here. And uh, Joe and I talked about the weather, and you can see right away the players getting money down there. Yeah, James Conley yeah. on the tackle, and I got a feeling by the second half we're not going to be able to read those Seaholm numbers, especially with yeah. the, uh, the dark maroon. And, uh, yeah, Kimball's 0-3 record. Uh, let's look at it. Clarkston, they lost to the first week. Then they lost to Waterford Kettering, a state-ranked team. Last week, Troy, one of the top teams in the entire state of Michigan, beat them 10-7 to in overtime. That's the kind of losses they've had. It's just been a real tough year for the Kimball Knights in terms of the schedule. The first pass that we've seen tonight on the second play from scrimmage, and that was incomplete as... You see Andy Martin down there running back. Let's take a look at the pass play, Joe. And Konarski, here's a guy who does double duty playing linebacker. Usually quarterbacks play quarterback and maybe D-back. This guy will be worn out by the end of the game. And here, receiver just can't get his footing, and it almost gets picked off by number six, Todd Ritter. And it's just kind of in the middle of the field. It's going to get more and more choppy as this game goes on. You're looking at the results of just warm-ups and uh, a couple of band routines. Imagine what that's going to look like in the third or fourth quarter. Third and 11 now for the Kimball Knights and another passing down. Let's see if they do go to the air. Very sloppy field out there. They go to the draw. The fullback takes it, number 45, Phillips. That's Kevin Phillips, not Ken Phillips. Ken Phillips is up here with us. And Kevin Phillips, another two-way player. He's the leading tackle on the Kimball Knight team, and now they're going to have to punt. And uh, going back to receive, again, Dave Schaefer, the best athlete on the team for Seahom. As you can see, you got third and long. You're just trying to get some field position there, and I think they tried to move it over the left hash to get the kick. Here we see head coach Terry Powers down on the sideline. And as Kimmel Knights 0-3, had a great season last year, undefeated. The punt is away by Murphy, and it's taken back there by Schaefer. Schaefer, who punted it away for, or kicked it off, I should say, for Seaholm, takes it back, and he's down at about the 44-yard line. First and 10 for the Seaholm Maples from there. Yeah, historically, when these teams have played, it's been an air attack going both ways. i got to feel it's going to be a little different with the uh, weather conditions and Seaholm. Got a very talented quarterback, Bill Sherman, only a sophomore. In fact, their whole starting backfield's a bunch of sophomores, which bodes well for the future, but the way Doug Frazier's always done things, he doesn't worry about the future. He tries to make the playoffs every year, and he's pretty much done it in the 90s, all except once. A uh, quick whistle down on the field, and uh, Joe, on that first possession that we saw by the Knights, they went to the air. Do you think they were trying to surprise the Maples by going to the air? I think it's so hard to run that, you know, there's, there's a theory with a lot of people that you can... You have an advantage offensively on this kind of field you because your cuts the receiver knows yeah. where he's going, the D-back doesn't, and you know we've seen Kimball do that in the past. We've never seen quite this kind of condition, but they've taken advantage of that against a Berkeley, against other teams that have swarming defenses, and that's what Seaholm has is a swarming defense. Kimball does as well. Seaholm's going to face the same thing here. Bill Sherman, the quarterback, with an eye formation, and now setting in motion was 46 Steffens. And look at this. A big run there. And already tough to see the numbers from way over here. Well, that's Looks like 28. That's Asa Sherwood. Asa yeah. Sherwood. That's their sophomore tailback, and he's got a tough job. He's replacing the leading ground gainer in Seaholm history in Jordan Herrick. That's a guy that gained probably 3,500, 4,000 yards. Was just an unstoppable player. We had him on TCI a few times. Yeah. 
And now you're as a sophomore coming in. Seaholm's always had great offensive players. Every year, though, they've either lost a quarterback or a running back or a fullback. This year, they lost them all. This is the first time that Frazier's had to put an entire new starting backfield in, probably in his whole time at Seaholm. First and 10 for the Maples as they pick up a big first down there. This time they go to the fullback and a punishing run there by 46. And that was Steffens, Chris Steffens. A nice run. There's your other sophomore, Steffens, here. Quick dive to the fullback. And uh, again, you look at two sophomores. This is something they had a few years ago when Jordan Herrick was a sophomore. They had Steve Hermanson also a sophomore, and it built up a tremendous bat running game for them for three straight years, which also allowed that passing attack to open up. And uh, make no mistake about it, this team likes to throw. And Stephens also a sophomore back there. A handoff again, this time to 28, Sherwood. And Sherwood and Steffens exchange back and forth. They're doing a great job running the ball. And this is important right now. They're getting first downs, and if you can get them early, if you, you might be able to win this game 7 nothing. Heck, you might be able to win this game 3 nothing. and you want to do it now, especially if you have to kick. You don't want to have Schaefer out there. I don't care how good a field goal kicker he is. You don't want him kicking in the fourth quarter when he can't get any footing at all. If you score early, that might be all that you need because this field will be choppy in the fourth quarter. He's a warm, muggy, sloppy night here. At Kimball High School, torrential downpour all day long. And already it's getting hard to see those numbers and a good run there again by Sherwood. Yeah, and, uh, and pretty much look at the screen, look at the uh, front of Steffens and the back of Steffens. That's the fullback doing all the blocking. And it's going to be tough for Sherwood to get any cuts. Look at him here. He's, he's running very cautiously and he's still gaining yardage. This is more fullback type weather, really. It sure is. And they're right in fullback territory there. They are right in the middle of the mud on that far side of the field. And it's raining again. It's starting to sprinkle again. That'd be fine, That's, that'd be easy after what we've had today. Stephens on the carry. Or rather Sherwood again, it's 28 on the carry. Yes. Off tackle, it'll be fourth and short yardage. Not much there, so All the right. Kimmel Knights bring up a fourth down situation. Now again, we've been talking about Schaefer. If it's dry out, I don't think there's any decision here. As you see, uh, the defense for Kimball, the, the noted Kimball defense. Aaron Cato on the tackle, number 33. Absolutely, and we were just talking 7 nothing, maybe 3 nothing will do it. Well, we're about to see. You know, we know Dave Schaefer's got 50-yard range in dry weather. Let's see what he can do uh, with, when it's going to be hard to get that plant foot down. So fourth and about three or four here. Let's see. 41-yard field goal attempt. Yeah. That could be the delay it's game be here. 46 yard field goal attempt now. Yeah. Good ball. Great game. Offense. Five yards. Repeat point down. Keep this in mind. Schaefer is also the punter. This might be a situation where you snap it quick to him and hope that he can just pin Kimball deep and set up their next possession. Let's see what they do now. As they get knocked back five yards. Still going to try it. And his career long is 50 yards. And that was done last year. What's the ball? What's the ball? Schaefer, the senior. Got it down, but uh, it's just tough to get footing down there, folks. And he shanks it off to the right side. So a very effective defensive uh, effort by the Kimball Knights as they stop the Maples. But the Maples do a little bit of damage. They move the ball pretty good, Joe, and uh, try to feel what they can do against the Kimball Knights so far. They know uh, that they were able to move the ball pretty good on the ground. Well, they, they established their offense, whereas Kimball has yet to do it. And remember, it's touchback. It's not, you don't return like in the NFL or in college to the line of the kick or line of scrimmage. This comes to the 20, and you'll see here that the holder has a tough time with the ball, and that might throw the kicker's timing off just a little, and you can also see that he just didn't plant. And uh, yeah. I mean, forget planning. We tried to stand out on that. We couldn't do that. Yeah, the mud sucked the shoes off our feet, actually. Here on the run for the Knights, not much there. On the carry was the fullback, number 45, Phillips. 5'11", 200-pound senior on the carry. There's Pete Butler, a senior. He's a three-year varsity player for the Maples, getting in on the tackle there. Coming up from a defensive backfield position to get the, uh, to get the fullback. That's a little tough. Jan Konarski, the quarterback. We saw Phillips there. 
Ganarski calls the signal, sends Cato in motion. And the handoff off tackle to number 41, Seaman. Dave Seaman on the carry. And how much there? Well, now you've got a yeah, probable passing situation for the Knights, as you see Seaman doing a little a little bit of work there. Just You just can't get your footing down there. You can't stress this enough. And not only for the runner, his linemen can't get their footing to sustain any kind of block. And you see the umbrellas are out already, or at least one of them is. And the mosquitoes are out, too. Oh, man. Believe it or not. The coach has offered us some uh, repellent. We turned it down. That was a little error. Janarski going the other way. And Cato has it for a first down. And he's breaks loose. Catch him. Aaron Cato. And it gets Kimball on the board. Well, Kimball was passing. Something told him they could do it. He back again on this drive and did it again, Joe. Yeah, and uh, he broke a couple of tackles and he was gone immediately. And of course, the way a football field will drain, actually that part of the field was a little, he had a little bit better footing, but still a great effort to break that tackle by Cato. Take a look here at Konarski roll out, little boot. Little bootleg there, buys himself some time, and at this point, you really couldn't tell which of the two receivers he was going for. As you can see, there was another guy behind him. Right here, when Cato breaks the tackle, gets a little bit of a block there from Andy Martin, and he's gone. And talking, and we talked earlier, seven nothing might win it. Well, here's your one score for Kimball. Let them establish their offense. Now the extra point attempt. Kevin Phillips to do the kicking. It is up, and it is good. And the Kimball Knights lead seven to nothing over Seaholm. Now Seaholm with the better record coming in, Joe, but Kimball also playing some very tough teams. Exactly. Kimball the first week loses to Clarkston. And uh, Matt says it right there that they lose to Clarkston. The next week they lose to Kettering, another ranked team. Last week, you see a replay of the touchdown. Say, look, Again, he comes the, uh, the opposite the way. The bootleg, bootleg by Konarski, and you're going to see him go downfield to Cato. And once he breaks the tackle right here, he's gone. And the fact is, they should have wrapped him up. Took three players right out right there, and that that was the big break that sprung him loose. Nobody Absolutely. was going to catch him here. And going back to the record, last week they took Troy to overtime, lost 10 to 7, and we're in that to the end. They, it's a game that most of them feel they should have won. Seal 2 and 0 started out 2 and 0, lost last week to Berkeley, 17 to 14. So these are two teams coming off of three-point losses. And again, it's, all, it's historically been a close game. Seaholm usually likes to throw the ball a little more than they have, but. Uh, Here's the scoring drive, three plays, 80 yards, 131 off the clock on the 33-yard touchdown reception to Cato. That's right, and that was a third down and five situation. No problem. And a crossing route by Cato and the broken tackle, and a, turned out to be an easy touchdown. Yeah, big conversion for Kimball. They were looking for a first down, they wound up with a touchdown. Back to receive is Asa Sherwood, and to do the kicking is number 22. And that again is Murphy. Back to receive is six, Ritter. Todd Ritter, number six on the far side, gets it and brings it across the 20 to about the 24-yard line. And that's where the Seahome Knights will start, deep in their own territory. Nice job in fielding that. Yeah, see the rain coming down, too. Ritter, a uh, junior, along with his uh, twin brother, Adam. Uh, there been a few Ritters on the single teams in the past, and uh, he's doing pretty much the same job they did. They, they're kind of a, uh, they do it all. A little, little offense, a little defense, linebacker, D-back, wherever you want them, you just fill them in, and they do the job, and you can see the rain coming down there. It, uh, it's monsoon season here at Campbell High School. Sherman, the quarterback, handing off to the tailback. And Sherwood breaks it out for a first down and more. Asa Sherwood taking over the bulk of the running duties here for Seaholm and doing a great job here, Joe. Oh, yeah, you can see again. This is a case where on a dry field, you never know how far he might go, but he's doing a good job of cutting. And once you can get outside of those hash marks, you do have a little bit of grass you can run on, and he does get the first down. I think a little room, maybe you can uh, think about throwing the ball at some point here. Great field position now, they're about the 39. The draw to the tailback, and again, that's Sherman, he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And uh, Sherwood, you know, as a sophomore, I don't know how many carries they want to limit the guy to. This is only his fourth varsity game. And 
you are going to have to give him the ball quite a bit. The tough part is that the other running back, Conley, is also a sophomore, and the quarterback's a sophomore. There isn't any experienced guy you can go to to, to take the bulk of the work tonight. I said it was Sherman. It was Sherwood. Sherman, the quarterback. And he's calling the signal. Sherwood goes in motion. Handing off to the fullback and diving forward with Steffens for a gain of about three or four yards and the third and long coming up now for Seaholm. You know, have to see what kind of play they call here. I know in the past, uh, third and long was the, uh, yeah, more times than not, it was the screen pass call for the Maples. I don't know if that's still how the, uh, how the playbook works there, but uh, it's usually a safe call. And when you have a quick running back, and it seems like Sherwood is, a lot of times you can get a lot of yardage out of that. Third and about six coming up. You see the clock here in the first quarter. Sherman back to pass, has some time, unloads to the outside of the field, and uh, he had Schaefer turned around, and well, he just tried to spin around and get it, and it was outside of him. You know, I'll tell you, that's really a case of the field. I don't know how long we had the camera on Schaefer there, but he turned, and it was one of those timing patterns where you make a move, and there's Schaefer to your left. He basically tried to turn and look for the ball to come to him on a timing pattern, but he slipped. And it made it look, I mean, he, I think he did turn around a little, but I think it made it look worse than it really was. It's just, I don't think you can make those timing runs today with all that cutting, and now Schaefer's got a punt in the downpour. So Dave Schaefer back to punt. You're on the fourth and long, and back to receive is number 21, John Ronan. Ronan just lets it go. And it rolls inside the 20-yard line to about the 16, and that's where the Kimball Knights will start. Boy, and the, your punter can be your most valuable player tonight if he can pin you deep. See, I hate computers. And this time they get him deep at about the 16. So the Kimball Knights will start there after a very successful drive on their last effort. And if you're, uh, you know, you don't like to say there's such a thing as a big drive in the first quarter, but I think today this is a big drive. I don't think you want to get down more than a possession at any point tonight, because the minute, the minute you're up more than a possession, if you're Kimball, I think you go into a ground attack and you just keep taking time off. Yeah, the let's see if they do that. That was going to be my question to you, Joe. Do they continue now to go to the air, or do they go to the ground now? Well, I think only up 7 up, and I think he still mix it up a little. In motion is Doman. And a handoff oh, up the middle on a nice trap play. And a nice run by Chris Nelson, number 34, the first time his number's been called as Konarski hands it off on a little counter play up the middle. Well, I don't think Nelson could believe how wide open this got. You see a couple of the guards pulling for him there, and all of a sudden there's no one near him. Finally, Pete Butler gets him right here as he slips, actually. Right. Big first down run Every play. for the Every Knights. Play. Now, they're out of that dangerous area, or maybe you do throw the ball a little bit. Well, they're keeping uh, Seaholm honest with their passing attack, and uh, so Seaholm could not concentrate on the run. That time, they spring him loose right up the middle. Konarski quick pattern out to Ronan. And Ronan gets some nice yardage close to a first down, but he'll be short a couple yards. Yeah. Yet uh, Adam Ritter, along with uh, Steve Stacey, Zan Butler there, and I like what they were trying to do. They're trying to strip him of the ball. Again, I think that's one of the, one of the things both teams are going to do. You know, bo most of these teams, I think, come out with maybe four or five footballs for the average game. I, th I know Seaholm came out with at least ten. I'm sure Kimball did the same thing. It's, it's every, it just changes everything that you do from week to week when you have this kind of condition. Yeah, it's not the, uh, the real team. That they, you can't do the things that you would normally do. But this time, Kimball goes to number 41, Seaman, Dave Seaman, who had a, another rush before that. Let's see if he's close to the first. He gets it. He got probably by the length of the football, maybe a little more than that, but now Kimball's doing a good job of mixing it up, and they've definitely got some offensive momentum. It'll be Kanarski to call the St. Louis now a first down situation for Kimball. Pass out again, this time Cato one-on-one, -on -one and he shakes one would-be tackler, and then another one finally down after about a two or three yard gain. So now it'll be second and long for Kimball. They continue to go to the air, Joe. Yeah, and it's working, and you know, there's a couple of missed tackles here, and you've got to wonder, even at this point, you see how muddy those uniforms are. Do you slip off a guy trying to tackle him just because his uniform's muddy? And 
finally Stacy's comes up and finishes him off with the tackle there, along with a little help from uh, Jason Heath. Second down now. Kimball, and off, goes to the fullback. He's got some room to run. And close to a first down goes Kevin Phillips. So the two key players, uh, the starters in there, Phillips, while being one of them, uh, getting some pretty good yardage, Joe. Yeah, and again, it's just a matter of a step or two. It looked like he was wrapped up. Take a look right here. And he's got the ball right there. He could have been tripped up. Now he gets outside. It's another first down run for Phillips. Finally, Schaefer and Butler combine on the tackle. Ball is at the 46-yard line of Kimball, and they are nearing sea home territory again. Last drive, very successful. Didn't eat, eat, eat up much of the clock, though. This time, they are mixing up the pass and the run effectively. Slipping here, just diving forward is Phillips for a gain of maybe three. He got tripped up by uh, he was Dobson, the first sophomore starting for him. Look at all that. And that is uh, Twins, it's what you got to deal here. with. Yeah. Mrs. Phillips gonna enjoy cleaning that. She had to make him clean it himself. Maybe I'll he does. That's how bad it is down there. Just standing. Uh, if you were to stand in one spot, it could uh, uh, like we did. Yeah, and, it, and and to then move, it, the mud would have just encased your shoe, and uh, it may be lost forever. Second and seven. Narski back to pass, has time, unloads, and uh, over the intended receiver down there, and that is Joe Doman, number 12. And it was, pass was there, it was a little high, catchable ball, I think, but you know, this is, the, they're keeping the pass rush out. Seaholm traditionally is really like to blitz the quarterback, and they haven't gotten near him yet. And I think it's a catchable ball again in a, in a normal day. Third down now and seven coming up. You can still see the rain coming down. And this is just complicating everything. And uh, they want a dry ball. They want some help. The center, number 54, Shane Gray. Well, um, his towel was just absolutely useless in uh, wiping that ball up. They just need it wiped, and that's what they're getting right now. Does this give it away that you're throwing the ball? <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> Quarterback wants a good grip on it. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's third You're and long, stuck. I mean, come on. They should right, figure. but, you know, I'm mean, going to watch him run a draw. Yeah. Cato's in motion. Kanarski calling the signals in there on the dry ball. He <laughs> lost it, and he tries to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Let's see if they didn't, they didn't like it enough. Yeah, that's probably the worst part of the field. That's why it's so bad down there. Yeah, that's where we were. Yeah, that's and, uh, probably the worst part of the field right there. Oh, yeah, you know what? He, he came out. And that I really don't think that's the conditions there. I think that's just uh, mistiming. That ball never touched his hands. But, of course, you know, that might be the center having, a tr having trouble with it, too. Kanarski, he's got to sit out just for this punt because he goes back in and plays linebacker. Yeah, I think and he's going to go take a shower real quick, yeah. come back out there. Well, that's something Terry Powers was saying. Makes him up. nervous as, as can be having his quarterback play linebacker. He's scared to death all the time that something's yeah. going to happen. to punt. Murphy gets it off. And back to receive is Schaefer. Schaefer cutting outside on the far side. Gets across the 25 to about the 27, 28 yard line. Good tackle by Scott Lance. So I think Schaefer might have had another 10, 15 yards. Now there's Konarski going back out. He's got his uh, hands covered up there, Joe. Well, yeah, he's on defense now. Yeah. And, you know, and it's probably a smart thing to keep him as dry as you can. He's having a good day passing. Three for five, including that touchdown. Well, nope, the gloves are coming off. Well, so is Konarski. Yeah. <laughs> Timeout called down on the field. And uh, we uh, end the quarter. And a very fast first quarter here, Joe, despite the passing. Well, five is not a lot, really, and three of them were complete. <laughs> so, you know, the incomplete's only going to stop the clock, but uh, there weren't a whole lot of changes of possession. So at the end of the first quarter here at Kimball High School, Kimball leads 7-0 on a big, uh, big play from Panarski to Kato. You gotta love it though. It's the fans fired up. As we get ready to start the second quarter. 
And uh, again, as you uh, look at the records coming into this game, you would have you would have thought, hey, you know, Seaholm's got the big advantage, but Seaholm well, uh, is down seven nothing right now. You would have, but but there you know, there's Doug, Doug, Frazier. Doug Frazier, and uh, you know that's something. Yeah, you would look at the records, but I think everybody knew this. You know, the Detroit News had this as one of their games of the week, and they're out here covering this game. And uh, they had said, why, why are we picking a game with an 0-3 team? Well, hey, don't let the 0-3 fool you. And in fact, almost everybody except for us picked people to win the game. So, uh, you know, the 0-3 is very deceptive. Now the first play of the second quarter, first down for Seaholm. And the Maples get a good run, and they're trying to bend him back. Ooh, that would have hurt. Big run there by Sherwood again. I think he's going to have a full night tonight. See Sherwood just getting as much as he can, and they're really doing a good job of running on first down. They're just, you know, they're getting a couple yards here, a couple yards there, letting the fullback do it, and then at some point the drives have been stalling. They've only attempted one pass, and that was on a third down passing situation. I think at some point, you know, I know you've got a soft line, it's bad weather and everything. I think you got to let him throw it first or second down just to loosen up the defense. Sherman, the quarterback, he's got Knapp in motion, number eight, and trying to get through the block of Steffens was Sherwood, and not much there, so it'll be third down, and that's uh, a good chunk of yardage left. Again, here's another potential passing situation, and uh, you know, you almost think maybe you run a draw here, or go back to that screen pass that we talked about earlier. Uh, it's just real hard to cut out there. <laughs> You know, you've got a sophomore who hasn't played in this kind of, he hasn't played a lot of football, period, and he definitely hasn't played a lot in this kind of weather. Sherwood, eight carries, 43 yards. Not bad. It's good average. Yeah. Trying to draw Kimball off sides. And the pass looks like it could be intercepted, and they come up with it. No, hit the ground. It was intended down there for Tallinger, John Tallinger, number 11. Yeah, he overthrew him quite a bit, and uh, well, I don't know if he just put too much into it or if it got away from him, but. Uh, Here's Sherman again. Yeah, take a look at Sherman on the left, he rolling out. And he's trying to plant his feet, looking him slip a little there, and this thing just flies off on him. And from this angle, you'll see whether or not it was an interception. Well, or, or not. <laughs> Still tough to tell. Punting down. And back to punt is Schaefer. And to receive, Ronan lets it go. It'll go out to about the 20 yard line, just shy of it at about the 21, 22 yard line. Well, so Kimball starting deep in their own territory again. Make them work hard. And if you're seeing home, I think defensively, you got to be telling yourself, look, other than a long pass play, on which you really did have the guy stop and just didn't complete the tackle, you've done the same thing they've done. You, sh you shut the team down. Don't worry about it. Just keep doing it. Maybe the defense, as you pin them back, can force a turnover. Maybe they can score a point. That's a 47 yard punt, by the way, by Schaefer. The first one was 40, and that's keeping him with his average also. This is a guy who's being recruited by Stanford, Michigan State, among other big time Division I schools. Great punt, gets Kimball back deep in their own territory. Cato in motion for Konarski. One back in the backfield, and that is number 34, and a nice run by Nelson, and we've got a flag down, as you saw it in the upper corner of the screen. So a good effort there by Nelson may be nullified here with a holding call. Yeah, I'll tell you though, if I think if I'm a Seaholm coach right now, a defensive coach, I'm a little unhappy with all these missed tackles. Ooh, almost uh, lost the snap there. Take a look, they almost there, forced almost the fumble Nelson, there. Uh, lost the ball, now he tucks it away. And, and a good effort in just coming down the line and just uh, trying to spring it outside. Absolutely. Let's hear the call down on the field. On the offense, half the distance to goal, repeat the down. First. Oh, is that a big penalty? It's a clipping, and that is even bigger than any any holding call that uh, we we had anticipated. So that gets him half the distance to the goal line. Yeah. You know, and I gotta think if I'm Seaholm, yeah, I, I like the idea of trying to force fumbles and strip the ball, but usually you have the first guy wrap him up, have the second guy go for the ball. They're going for the ball right away, as we saw there. Nobody bothered to make a tackle. Yeah, and then if not you end for up that clip, first down. Exactly. If not for that clip, they're first and ten out at the 35-yard yeah. line, and they're in great field position then. Two receivers split now for Konarski. 
And two men in the backfield. He goes to the second man, and that is number 20, Sitterlin. Mike Sitterlin Morrison. back in there. Mike Morrison, 6'5", 225, senior. Hard, hard to miss him. Take a look right here, number 85. There's no missed tackle on yeah. this guy. It's a quick counter play. They try to fake to the one back and come back across to settle it the other way. And it looks and like it just uh, didn't work. Yeah, you get a guy that size out there. It's uh, <laughs> team will tend to run to the other side of the field. Second and 22 now for Kimball. And if there's a time they need to go to the air, this would be it. They don't. They stay on the ground. They're in their own territory, and they don't want to come up with any kind of turnover down here. Exactly. I was going to say, I don't think you throw it here, not when you're up, and not, early, not in the first half. There's, uh, I mean, even in dry weather, there's more bad that can happen here than good. Yeah. But they've already fumbled one snap. Don't, don't mess around too much over here. And I, think you, I think you run it again here. You've got third down and oh, 20, 22 yards. I think you go right back to a run. Try to just set the ball up where your punter has the best footing he can get. And they're at one part of the field, though, right now that is probably the, the driest. They're at the highest peak of the field in terms of drainage. So they go to the draw. And bouncing outside is Nelson. Nelson gets some good yardage, but got back to the original line of scrimmage. Well, there's a prevent defense. and. Uh, not so much the missed tackles there as we'd seen before, but just the prevent defense saying, well, yeah, he's not getting 22 yards. We'll give him his 10. And that's what he does. He gets out of danger as far as the punter worrying about anything like a safety. It allows him to have a full snap, the full 15 yards back there. And, uh, you know, all those yards are going to yeah. matter because Seaholm should get good field position. Yeah. Valuable yards, though, nonetheless, for Kimball. As Joe mentioned, they do have room now to punt this away, but the pressure was on, and he gets a good punt off, and it's fielded down there by Schaefer. Nice job on keeping his footing, and he gets knocked out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. So great field position now for Seaholm, the best that they probably had to start with. Yeah, I believe so, except maybe that first drive they yeah. started near it, but uh, here you see they almost get in and block this. See, uh, Right up the middle, Couple guys, actually. Ritter and uh, Morrison almost get in there. Now Schaefer does a good job of keeping his footing, does keep the knee off the ground. I was kind of wondering about that. Yep. And he finally gets knocked out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. Yeah, if I'm seeing him, I'd like to see him throw right here, first down. Let's see what they do. Bill Sherman, the quarterback. And there's some illegal motion in the backfield there. Somebody wasn't set back there. Who was that? Was that Steffens? That was the fullback, yeah. And I wonder, did he decline this penalty and give him second down and 10? They didn't gain anything on the run. And you see Steffens walking back with Sherwood, and yep. uh, he Here. was not set in the backfield. Well, that's the quick uh, quick pitch. That's the, uh, the speed option play that they run. And uh, <laughs> it seems like every quarterback they've ever had there that runs the option just pitches it real quick, or they keep the ball and run with it, but they never run the option purely where they get nailed as they pitch it. <laughs> A lot of abuse to take down there. And again, this is a uh, team that's. Uh, we'll let the official make the call here. Illegal motion on the offense. Five yards. Repeat first down. So first and 15 now for Seaholm after the penalty. There you see the clock. 7:30 coming up on 7:30 here in the second quarter. Sherman handing off to Sherwood, and Sherwood bounces outside, has some blocks. Oh, is he and close a to nice going? run. He was close to being gone. And I think he had this little pickup in his step like he thought it too. Now he's going to come off, I think. I don't know if he's coming off for the player. Well, he's got to wipe his eyes off. He had one in his eyes. You can see him. Yep. Let's take a look. Take a look right about Breaks here right is where there. I think he sees the hole. Look at this. He picks up right now. I think he knows he could go. But just, you know, the spirit's willing, the legs are willing, the grass isn't going to let you do it. And that's what happened. His face went right into the mud, and it, uh, it deserves a little uh, <laughs> towel there. Sherman calls a signal. The pitch, and he was I'll tell you, that just didn't develop at all. Sherman just went maybe two or three steps and pitched it out to uh, a uh, very vulnerable back. Well, again, this is something that, you know, that, that play's been in there 
long as I know at Seaholm. Uh, some of their quarterbacks never pitched it. Some of them did that, where you pitch it right away. The defense doesn't even bother to cover the quarterback. I don't know that I like that when you've got second and five. Just give it to your fullback, see what you can get. Scott Lance getting back in there to get Todd Ritter. He was stepping in for 28 Sherwood. Sherwood back in there by the Ritter estate. Six minutes, under six minutes now, and the pass incomplete intended on the far sideline for Tallinger. Yeah, and that was uh, in the dirt, and even if Tallinger catches it, it's going to be fourth down and five. You see the wind's picking up, too. That has been windy all day long and just uh, now picked up even more. Just a great day, isn't it? <laughs> so you see Terry Powers looking on his team lead, 7 nothing, and ready to get the ball back now. The punt from Schaefer. Nice end over end punt taken and a good uh, catch there by Ronan. Ronan takes it right up the field now and uh, across the 30 to about the 33 and that's where Kimball will start. Let's see, this Ronan, is a tough, tough one to catch there. Good one, got it right in his gut. Yeah, I think he knows it's a good thing to catch this because if you let it roll, you're gonna be back down inside the 15, maybe inside the 10 with a roll there. Now they've got nice field position right about the 32 yard line. They can do whatever they want here. Kimball leads seven to nothing over Seaholm here in the second quarter. And Joe, you talked about uh, that first score and being important. It sure is. And you can tell by the way Kimball's been playing and, and Seaholm now, they, uh, they feel like they have this insurmountable lead to overcome even though it's one touchdown. Exactly. Well, the handoff goes to the first man through and it's just a stack. Right at the line of scrimmage there. Yeah, well, in fact, you know, you get the feeling that the next score by either team is going to happen by their defense. So that's your, Phillips. That's yeah. your best shot. Look yeah. at here. You know, you, this is your fullback. He runs right into the middle of the line and gets stood up by Mike Steffens, and everybody else joins in after that, and he loses a yard. And, well, you know, you're up 7 nothing. It's just real hard at this point, I think, for either team to, you know, give in and throw the ball. I think you just go ahead and run, especially with that 7 nothing lead. And the rain continuing to fall, making yeah. it even worse and compounding the problems. Five minutes left here in the second quarter. Here's the end around. And taking it is Nelson. Nelson now cuts up field and they get him right at about the original line of scrimmage. <laughs> and you see the mud on his arms as he gets up. And uh, you can see where it's hard for guys even to wrap the guy up. Take a look at this. Nelson's going to come around, and Morrison's going to get him coming up right here and just can't wrap him up because he can't plant his feet to stop. So then Schaefer and Heath have to finish it off. You just, you just can't stop out there. Kimball has had the misfortune of being in the bad end of the field last time when they were going the other direction. Now they're in a very bad part of the field right now in that hash at about the 30 yard line. There's a good part of yeah. the field. Yeah. <laughs> Inbounds is the there, bad there part. There aren't too many, but <laughs> at least that part is oh really worn out. And there, everybody slides around. Now, Morrison didn't miss the tackle that time. He got all over him. And it's just uh, it's like a monster out there with that size. So, Konarski goes down, and so do the Knights. Let's take a look. Well, you're going to see he has no time to look for anybody, and you're going to see big number 85 come shoot through and wrap him up. And if you've got a punt block in your game plan, maybe you do it right here, because if you block this punt, you got an easy touchdown come. They came hard last time and came real close. Let's take a look. This time, not as much pressure, but he got a high one off. A little shank, but uh, not much roll. So again, good field position for Seaholm after the punt by Jim Murphy. Ball oh, will be out at about the 42 yard line, 43 yard line. So good field position for yeah. Seaholm. And with 325 left, if you're Seaholm, I think you're you're hoping obviously to score and tie this game up. But at worst, you're not going to give Kimball a whole lot of time to do anything if they get the ball back. First and ten for Seaholm. Dave said Bill Sherman, the quarterback. Sherwood, Asa Sherwood back in the backfield, and Knapp goes in motion. Sherwood on the handoff, bounces outside, and a big burst of speed gets him close to the first, but not enough. Gain of about eight. 
and, and he again that's, that's the third run today where I think if it's dry out there I don't know that he scores a touchdown but I think he gains at least 20 yards Take a look. Look right here. You're delaying your cut, or you're, you know your cut's just not as crisp yeah. because you got to be careful. And you can't pick up that momentum. But still, what a run! Second and nine. Yeah. Now don't option it this time. Yep. Gain of nine. Second and one. Let's see what they do. High formation in the backfield. Sherman hands off straight up the middle, and nothing there. That they knock him way back. Let's see what kind of forward progress they give him. They yeah. any forward progress. No. Loss. Well, that's tough when you get a fullback play. Dive straight up the middle. Looks like they were anticipating this one. And look at this. He's uh, close to the hurt? line. Yeah. I'll tell you, it wasn't great the guy penetration there uh, on the Kimball defensive line. I think it was Phillips along with that guy right there messing. I think Cantwell's in there as well. They just didn't get any kind of speed. Oh, Billy. Third down now, coming up on two minutes left in the first half. Nice run there, but they stop him before he gets to midfield. Kimball getting tough now in the middle of the field and uh, stopping Seaholm from getting that first down. Fourth down, under two minutes left. They're going to set up the punt. They have been known, Seaholm in the past has been known to try and draw you off sides when it's the fourth and less than five. And that is, that is what Terry Powers was yelling down there. Watch the ball. Don't go off the count. Trying to get uh, Konarski off the field. And he does. Oh, my. The snap over Dave Schaefer. This could be trouble. It is blocked. And a flag. Oh, no. A flag, which could be unnecessary roughness. And the only guy back there was Chad Urich for Kimball. Schaefer's on the ground. Hurt. And he is uh, he's in pain. Oh, man. I mean, I don't know if you could see how quick his teammates rushed to him. That's he's not up. roughing the kicker, though, if the he's ball's up. on the ground. I know. I don't know why they that's, threw it. That's not roughing the kicker. Unless maybe there's a spearing penalty. Yeah, and maybe that's why he got hurt. Let's see what happened. Let's get the call. No nope. preliminary. No flag. Okay, yeah. so the refs. Loose ball. Talk it over. Oh, the, well, I don't like that reason yeah, either. They, he's saying he's giving this signal that, that it's means a tipped ball. Who cares if it's tipped once it's on the ground? You can yeah. kill this. I mean, it's terrible to say it, but you can, you can do whatever you want. You don't have that's illegal. Yeah. The spear. All right, maybe you can't Could've spear been. him, but if it's a spearing penalty, it's a spearing penalty regardless. Roughing the kicker's gone yeah. once that ball touches the ground. Yeah. That's why I wonder what what other call could be down there besides uh, roughing the kicker, but uh, even a spearing call, and that was waved off. A big break for Kimball now with 123 left here in the first half. Cato goes in motion. Janarski back to pass. Has time, unloads, downfield, complete. He's got John Ronan down there for a big reception and a big first down. Boy. What a turn of events here, and you can see Kanarski does a good job of planting his feet, looking for the open man, and just delivers it right on the numbers. And they've still got plenty of time. They don't even have to bother using their timeouts yet. Good catch with pressure coming on from Todd Ritter. As Ronan comes up with a big reception. Ball just outside the 15, about the 16-yard line for Kimball. Fake. And Konarski in the grasp. He throws it to the sideline. Is anybody there? That's a that's, that's, Play. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I didn't see anybody over there, but uh, the only closest guy I see Ken Phillips down there. It's intentional grounding. Right here, he's wrapped up by Jason Heath. Now just heaves it out of bounds, and uh, I guess Kevin Phillips is over there somewhere. Kevin Phillips, not Ken Phillips. Ken, Ken Phillips, Phillips is here. here yeah, so he's think, covered. But that's where I think he was throwing. It's up here in the boot. He was closer than any of his receivers. <laughs> Ken, Ken was closer than Kevin with that ball. The officials are discussing something. There's no flags to be discussing. Yeah. Kanarski, four for seven, 101 yards and one touchdown, and he's looking for his second one here. Get the out of the air. Second and ten. Kanarski. 
Oh my. They're just letting these guys in. A big sack and a loss. Couldn't throw that one away. Um, a loss of about five yards. Yeah, Chris McQuiston gets in here real quick on him. Wraps him up, actually loses him for a second, then pulls him down as you guys jump on top like uh, Todd Fenton. But uh, Seaholm, uh, calling the right numbers now. They're getting the right guys in to stop the passing attack. It looked like Kanarski thought about throwing the ball again, didn't it? Uh, you see where we are. I'm hiding behind the monitor. We're dry. Oh. Yeah, we are dry up here. Best place to be on this field. Kanarski, deep. And incomplete. Just shy of the goal line. He had him. He had him. Intended again for Ronan. Ball's right there. I think it's a little low, but it's catchable. Take a look here. Kanarski's got time this time. His line keeps the defenders off. Oh, it does get tipped. That got tipped, which throws off the timing right away. I'm not sure who that was. We can't see through all that mud. That ball was deflected. And they're going to try to kick it in for three points here. It is the left-footed kicker, Jim Murphy. Murphy does the punting also. Flag fly, the kick is up and it would have been wide, but let's see. And it's a dead ball foul, so you have to take the penalty. And... 55, blue. Dead ball, illegal procedure, offense, feet fourth down. Illegal procedure on like Roberts from the call down there. Dan Roberts for the Knights. This is a long field goal now. I... <laughs> I wonder, do you do you punt now or? Uh... Nope. Kicking team goes to the side. They're going to talk about it. They get a timeout. I tell you, there you see the score: seven nothing, Kimball, with 16 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Next week, don't forget to tune in. As. Uh, we got another exciting game for you. Get in the end zone, three guys gotta be there. Right. Here it is, Troy Athens, the Red Hawks take on the Rochester Falcons. Saturday and Monday at 8 p.m. right here on TCI 63. This is your uh, comeback team of the year so far in Oakland County. They're having a great season. The Red Hawks. Right, man. I wonder, considering the conditions and all the bad things that can happen with a long snap, I might just run a play here. Take a look at this TCI conference. These are the teams that we'll be covering this year and uh, see which teams are doing well. Here's Athens right here with these other two, which means Troy is going to have back to back big games at the end of the year. They got Clarkston at week eight, Athens week nine. Yeah. That's a tough setup going into the playoffs where you're probably going to play Catholic Central either the first or second week. Hopefully, we'll bring those games to you. Back to passing again. He gets blitz. Strikes. And throws, and it's complete. Just outside the ball line with nine seconds left. It's a good call. That's the call I like to see. Number 31 yeah. caught that. No, I believe it was Nelson. Was, was it Nelson? Nelson? 21. Nelson, it was Nelson, 34. 34. This is how far away we are. But again, I think they didn't want to take that risk. You weren't going to make the field goal anyway. And a punt doesn't do you any good. Just throw it up on fourth down, see what happens, and uh, everything but a touchdown out of that. Shaking the defender right here was the biggest play. And uh, trying to get in there was Morrison. I'll tell you what, Konarski is keeping up this tradition Kimball's had of quarterbacks. You know, they had a. Davis a few years ago was mm -hmm. an All-State quarterback. They had a good couple of years, played a good year last year, getting in the playoffs again. Konarski, this is his first year as a starting quarterback, and he's doing a great job, all things considered, with this weather. See, Holmes' defense comes back out. John Ronan, three receptions, 49 yards. Good average for him tonight. And uh, even better average for Chris Nelson on this one reception oh, right there. And a big reception that is. First and goal on the one. There's nine seconds left. I, I'm pretty sure they still have another timeout. So they can go ahead and try to run the ball here, I think. Timeout. And the timeout goes to no signal down there. Here we go. Seaholm. Seaholm. They want to set that defense up. You, I don't think you can afford to go in down 14-0. That's... Uh, <laughs> And up Not with these conditions, yeah. Seven nothing might be insurmountable. Fourteen nothing really is going to kill you. The field conditions having a big part to play in this game, and there you see the sideline. You can see how bad it is down there. 
This is right in front of uh, the Kimball bench towards the 40-yard line, right about the 40-yard line. And that right there is how it is at the hash mark down on the field. So on the field is just as bad as that. And there you see uh, the, uh, the refs. Uh, boy, they should have just worn the dark pants tonight. Are they on the Yeah, <laughs> the basketball teams. Yeah. There you see Konarski and Terry Powers talking it over. Looks like they might go to the air, huh? Is that last motion by uh, Terry Powers showed us? Yeah, I, well, I'm pretty sure they have one time out left. But, you know, maybe you don't want to take that risk of uh, being stretched out and taking a nine second If he doesn't run. see anything, can he throw it on the spike it in the ground? You got to spike it quick. That's a ground yeah. Once you run a play, you, although he got away with it once throwing it out, you know. Yeah. There you see the clock and the situation. First and goal on the one. Look at that line. Three receivers on the far side. Konarski takes it himself. I believe he crossed from this angle. Well, I'm looking at the spot that the official's giving him, and he's saying no. You know what? I think we're looking at a soccer line. There's a soccer line down there, too. I think what we saw. That's what I might have saw. Well, now they do use that timeout, so right. You do the running play now. And you, this is your last play, so. Let's take a look right down the line. Does we'll he cross it? Draw. Well. There's the ball. Remember, it's not him. It's the ball. And I'll tell I, you what. No. I think he lands no. across the line. No. If you can back that up, I think you're going to see he didn't get in. Uh, from here, you're not going to. From right. the ground. Look at Let's this see. white line. Yeah. Does that ball get over? Oh, he gets I over. See. He gets over. All right. From that other level. I, I thought he had the ball on the outside shoulder, or rather the inside shoulder, which would be his yeah, the right. The shoulder's in. I don't think the ball's in. So we've got... We got a timeout. All right, take Second a look here. Second and goal now and probably the last play. Let's take a look. All right. Remember, the quarterback's just going to keep it right here. And the ball's in his left arm. Okay, that's the far it. far arm. Yeah. If it was in the other arm, he would have been All right, in. now watch. Down here's the line. He's still not over yet. Now watch where he lands. Take a look. Slow it down right here. This is the line. The ball's over here. He's not in the end zone. The yeah, ball's ball not is the end right zone. here. They are holding. Uh, the, in fact, a sea home player has it also. Yeah. The ball's not in the end zone. Good call by the officials. Same lineup again. They have three receivers split out to the right side. Konarski takes it himself this again. Time. This time he is in. No doubt about it on that one. So Konarski with a one-yard run with three, or if you call it a run, three <laughs> seconds sneak. left on the clock. The quarterback sneak. Oh, take that. a look, Joe. Right here. This time he follows his blocking in there. Gets a good block right there from number 57. Scott Karolak, who opens up the hole for him. That allows him to just walk right into the end zone. And, uh, boy, 14 nothing is usually no big deal, especially when you have the offensive uh, scheme that they have over team home. But, oh, no, today that might, be, that, that might be very hard to come back from. Extra point attempt by Phillips. It is good. And it's 14 nothing, Kimball. Now we'll just get a, uh, I'm sure, just a squib kick to run time off the clock. So Konarski runs it in, at, but the big play was that pass play down there to Chris Nelson, which got him to the one. And it was an amazing play. He got out of the arms of Morrison, which really looked like he was going to be at sacks for a loss. It was fourth down. And it was fourth down. So, yeah, if, if that doesn't work, it's over. Yeah, Seaholm just downs the ball and runs the end of the half out. Seven plays, 34 yards, one minute, 20 seconds off the clock, and a one-yard run by Konarski. And it's set up by the uh, special teams play with the snap over the punter's head. That's right. Not really ruled a turnover since it was fourth down, right. running down. So, but it uh, turned it's a out to big be play. A big play. It's just a, a huge play. play. Yeah. There you see, number 45 for Seaholm, James Connolly, Jr. He's one of the guys back there deep. Up, man, I should say, and actually he gets close to getting it. The fullback gets it. It's Steffens. Steffens stacked up, and that'll be the last play of the half. That'll do it. And a big, big first half for the Kimball Knights as they score early in the first. 
and score late in the second quarter to give them a big 14 to nothing lead right now. And we say big in a normal night, that wouldn't be big, but right big. now with field conditions the way they are, and we stress that all the time, but uh, folks, you gotta know it's, really it's big. playing a part in this game. With the score, 14 nothing in favor of the Knights over the Maples. We'll be back with halftime stats for you right after this. If you wish a video cassette of TCI Sports, the cost is $25. Send a check payable to TCI, along with your name, address, and the names of the teams that played in the game to TCI Sports Videotapes, 4500 Delamere Boulevard, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48073. Remember to tell us which game you wish to receive. And thank you for watching TCI Sports. What TCI is looking to do is we're looking to be a full service provider, a, a one-stop shopping place, if you will. Um, we're looking to provide all the services that anyone wants to consume in the area of communications, whether that's cable television, whether that's telephone, whether that's data, online services. Um, our goal is to be able to provide all those through one avenue, and that avenue being TCI. TCI Cablevision of Oakland County, nominated in three categories for National Cable Ace. Sports Programming. Public Affairs. Overall Commitment to Local Programming. And the Cable Ace Board goes to... Transition. The Cable Ace goes to... TCI Cablevision of Oakland County. TCI 63. See what you've been missing. It's the way you inspire. It's the way you grow. It's the way you lead. It's the way you play. It's the way you work. It's the way you discover. TCI. It's the way you learn. It's the way you The TCI Sports Game of the Week is brought to you by Modernistic Carpet Cleaning. Comet Burgers in Royal Oak. Buy one burger, get one free when you mention TCI Sports. Mike's Market Share Coupon Book. And by Bell Tire. The TCI Sports Game of the Week. Dave Zorin along with Joe Abramson here at Kimball High School where the Kimball Knights lead 14 to nothing over the Seahole Maples. Let's take a look at that first half scoring for you. Here we see Konarski rolling out and he'll find a wide open Aaron Cato. This is on third down and five and Aaron Cato is going to get the ball in stride and then break a couple of tackles and he's gone for the touchdown right here. Not as wide open as I made it to be, but uh, <laughs> a nice job by Konarski to drop that pass in there. And it, yeah, it's hard to throw a good catch and as we mentioned, he broke the tackles, and then it was an easy run into the end zone. 33 yards for the touchdown, and the extra point was good, and it made it 7 to nothing in favor of Kimball. In the second quarter, it was three seconds left on the clock, and Konarski got his one-yard run in there. And that was for set up. The next touchdown, the extra point was good. Also, it was 17 or 14 to nothing. Yeah. Excuse me. And that was set up by a big fourth down pass, and also set up by the uh, special teams play on the punt situation. Here you see the passing. I see home with nothing on the board. I don't know if that's ever happened over there for a half, getting no yardage. But the conditions have contributed to that. Kimball passing more than they're running. Seaholm has done a real good job of running. Nobody's really been able to run on the Knights defense all year, even though they are 0-3. Troy didn't run on them. Clarkston beat them through the air. Turnovers, now there's no turnovers, but again, that punt, that might as well be a turnover when that thing snapped over the punter's head. First down's huge for Kimball, and that's why they've got the lead. There you have the halftime stats. We'll be back with the second half kickoff right after these messages. Kimball leads 14 to nothing. 
When you call Modernistic, we'll show up with this. $35,000 worth of carpet and upholstery cleaning technology. Call the competition, they'll probably show up with this. Our truck-mounted equipment can professionally clean your carpets with 10 times the power of portable cleaners, removing dirt, harmful bacteria, pollens, and more. The competition can. Of course, there is one thing the competition does that we can't. They make a lot more noise. Modernistic, count on us. So the tire store guy says, great deal on them tires. You want valve stems? No thanks. Your tires won't work without valve stems. They're extra. Then he told me all the other extras I needed. So guess what happened to my great deal on them tires? Only Bell Tire gives you out-the-door pricing. You get the guaranteed lowest price, and at Bell Tire, it's the total, complete, everything's included price with absolutely no extras ever. Bell Tire. Nobody comes close, nobody's closer. Oakland Press Perspective with Neil Monroe is an informative talk show that discusses issues often overlooked by broadcast stations. Neil Monroe, the editor of the Oakland Press newspaper, will keep you abreast on hot topics, events, and issues taking place in Oakland County. So for news you can use, join Neil Monroe every week on the Oakland Press Perspective, Friday night at 8.30 on TCI 63. Welcome back to the TCI Game of the Week. The Kimball Knights over the Seahole Maples. 14 to nothing, and we are ready to start the second half. And uh, still rain coming down, a light mist right now, but uh, already compounding the problems down on the field for the players. Yeah, hurricane after effects once again. Yeah, and uh, we should mention that the field conditions uh, led the way and paved the way for that second touchdown for Kimball. Well, with uh, getting the getting the ball and no the bad no snap. punt off, yeah, for uh, the Maples, and that uh, led to that uh, second touchdown for the Kimball Knights. Well, I think it helped on, uh, it might have even helped on the first one because I think the defender slipped in trying to cover the receiver. And it's, I, think, I think the field conditions have affected turn near every play actually in the first half, and they'll continue to do so. It'll be the Kimball Knights kicking off to the Maples, and back to kick off is Murphy, Jim Murphy, number 22. And deep to receive for Seaholm. Well, we don't know. Number. <laughs> Sherwood looks like he's in the middle. That's probably Ritter. That goes off to Ritter, number uh, either Ritter or Knapp. I think it's one of the two Ritter. Todd Ritter, Ritter number six, if it is. And it is. There's Todd Ritter with the return here. And that's the uh, second time they've kicked off to him. He gets it out almost to the 30-yard line, good field position, and uh, it's darn near imperative that, uh, that they score on this possession, I think. And they haven't completed a pass yet, but this is their uh, sophomore quarterback, Sherman. He hasn't thrown. 0 for 3, no yards. Uh, 0 for 3 is not bad. He hasn't really hadn't had a chance. Yeah. High formation in the backfield. The tailback hits it. Sherwood. Gain of maybe a yard. Good tackle. He, he could have gained a lot more, but for Scott Carolack wrapping up his leg, now he's over 60 yards with that carry. And you see, that's 58 yards at the half, so he is over the 60 mark now. That's a two yard gain. And we watch right here, Carolack's going to grab that leg, and if he doesn't do that. Oh, actually, it was Phillips. Phillips Carolack jumped on the. I saw Carolack jump on the pile, I guess, but. Uh, if Phillips doesn't grab that leg, he's gone for at least 10 yards. German calls a signal. Back to pass. Going deep and way overthrown. Intended down the sidelines there uh, to uh, the number 10. Looked like Schaefer. Yeah, I think it was Schaefer, and he had Rich Waters coming across the middle. I don't know if he could have gotten it to him either. He just uh, a little strong on that throw. I mean, that's only his fourth attempt of the game, and he is... He is just a sophomore, and uh, they, have, they haven't started a whole lot of sophomores at Seal and the quarterback, but the last few years, Bill Feldmeyer started for a while. A few other guys have. This guy will be all right. He's 6'3", he's 185. He's going to develop into a nice quarterback for them. Steffens, four carries for 15 yards. Third and nine. Dropping back for the screen, and he's got Sherwood, but... 
Sherwood gets back to the line of scrimmage, so it's fourth and punting down now for the Maples, and a big stop there. Flag downfield. There's a flag way downfield where you might get defensive holding. Yeah. This, I mean, it's 15 yards past the line of scrimmage, and uh, yeah, screen passes over the years has been, uh, I think, the call that they make most of the time on third down at Seaholm. And Phillips down there again to make the stop. Refs talking this one over. Penalty flag is at about the 45 yard line of Birmingham. Yeah, I bet you it's a defensive hold. No. Nope. No flag. Flag is waved off. That's the second time they've second done that. Time that's happened. And a break for Terry Powers, actually. I would think, because I don't think you get an offensive penalty all the way down there, unless. Unless they were calling an illegal man downfield, but there can't be one if the screen pass is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. That might have been what they were, maybe they were going to call it on Seaholm. It'll be a punting down again for Schaefer, Dave Schaefer to do the punting. It's a low end over end kickoff and a good job by Roman to field it. It's back to midfield, close to midfield. And uh, he's got to get those, Joe. There's no, uh, oh. for Ronan, if he lets that go, that's going to go all the way down yeah. inside the 10. Oh, absolutely. It probably won't bounce as far as it would on a dry field, but yeah, it's going to get him at least 15 more yards. And, and I think he learned that the first two punts when he let him go by that they kept getting the, uh, getting a little bit of a roll. And take a look as he comes this way. You're going to see what almost is a block in the back right there. <laughs> and he has a close, but not quite there. And now the Knights have great field position on the field. Gonarski to throw on first down, and he's got his man. Oh, a good job to position himself. Ronan had his defender on the inside, and the ball went to the outside. Had a nice job in turning around. Five of nine for Konarski before that pass. And he was 125 total oh, for him. So. One touchdown also. Yep. Take a look, and this little fade pattern down the left left sideline and just a little short and the, the plays there just wasn't able to time it right. You see Rowan split out again. Second and 10 now. Konarski on the little counter play tries to take it himself. Shakes off one tackler and then finally brought down by That's a linebacker. The line of scrimmage That's there. a linebacker playing quarterback there yeah. sticking his head in like that. That gives you the respect of the rest of your teammates when you start doing that. Good job down there. There's Ritter and also well, Steve Stacy. As well, and you see right here, he's going to put his helmet down. Boom. And it is Ritter that he tackles there. You saw Stacy's on your screen a second ago. But it brings up a third down and basically 10. Third and a long nine. See what uh, Konarski can do here. Phillips, five carries, 14 yards, as we showed you earlier. And a complete and a first down. The completion gets him right at the first down. And I'll tell you, John Ronan, a smart receiver, knew yeah. where he had to go to get his Man. first down and still come back to the ball. And more than that, I think you're going to see Ronan come right through your screen in a second. He's, he just went by you right there. He got in between five Maple defenders. Only place he could be where there's no one there to knock the ball down. The throw was perfect, and he was in the only spot where you could make that throw. Great, great combination between him and the quarterback. Three receptions, 36 yards for Ronan. Good average for him tonight as he comes split down to the bottom of the screen. Handoff goes to Nelson. Nelson finds some room and cuts up for a gain of close to five yards. Let's see where they mark him. About four. Four yards on the carry. Uh, see home defense has to really get strong right now or they're going to be totally out of this game. You see McQuiston prevent him from making any extra yardage, but that's a good run by Nelson. Kimball doing a good job of rotating the backs and uh, all the backs really contributing to the offense tonight. Well, they got three of them back there this time. And, uh, and a good run. Sitterlet fumbles the ball oh. and a 
that's going to be see home ball. Pete Butler stripped him after he gained 15 yards. I don't know who fell on top of it, but that's the play they needed. That guy number three, you just saw to the right of your screen, made the strip. Big break, and down at the bottom was number 25, and that was Connolly, James Connolly with the recovery. Oh, that's a huge play because this was Sinterlet almost. has a big gain here, Joe. This is almost a play that breaks their back, and you're going to see coming up right here, number three, Pete yep, Butler. He did it. The Butler did it, <laughs> so to speak. He wanted to say that all day. I, I, I didn't even realize it until he, uh, he pulled that ball out of there. A nice job. Watch him rip it out again. He he got him wrapped up, and then right there he spins it out of Sitterlitz's hand. Sitterlitz did a great job oh. of holding the ball. It's just a matter of. If that play's not made, Kimball's got first and 10 inside the 20. Yeah. They're well on their way to putting the game away. Yeah, it's just a matter of Butler wanted it more. There's the first turnover of the game, and Kimball has it. Back to pass. Sherman has a man short. And a nice job and a nice effort there. And finally knocked out of bounds. Steffens, Chris Steffens, showed a lot of heart on that one. He just wouldn't go down. Yeah, big fella. Steffens, the sophomore. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> bruising play. Yep, let's hear it. <laughs> the crunch finally coming in there as Joe Doman gets in there, number 12 for the Kimball Knights. Whistle down on the field, official whistles. He's gonna wipe the ball off. And that is that one area that I talked about that, that's specifically the hash marks on that end of the field and then uh, on the opposite end on the other side of the field is about the 20 on the other side. So just mud and just a terrible area. That's where Kimball had it in the second quarter. Couldn't do anything. This time Seaholm does a great job in going to the other way, the dry side of the field, and Sherwood takes off for a big first down. Well, they ran their... Uh Snap in motion, who, would, who looked like he was lined up on an end. They had an unbalanced line. Basically, the tackle there played the end, and that just gave them all kinds of blockers on that side. That opens up a big hole for Sherwood. And I mentioned the dry side of the field. Not really dry, but there's some grass there, and you yeah. get a little bit of footing. Over here, there's nothing but mud. And once again, there's an official timeout. I don't know, are they uh, trying to get the ball dry again, or just what they're doing, but now, now we get the clock running. First and 10. Ball is outside the 40 yard line at the 41. Slipping was Sherman. Finally got the handoff off to Sherwood. And he was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage if he did. I'll tell you something to watch. Anybody trying to block, watch the receivers downfield trying to block, watch the linemen trying to block. You can't plant your feet to sustain any kind of block here. Take a look at his lead blocker there. 46 Steffens just couldn't couldn't set anything up. That's why the play didn't work. Ball comes closer to the middle of the field now after that. I formation and a pro set with the receivers. Sherman calls a signal, second and ten. Took a long time on that one. And he throws oh, a long no. pass, and it's up for grabs. And Doman has it down the line. And look at this. Almost ran and finally brought out of bounds right into your living room. And I hope they didn't get any mud on you because that is the worst area of the field right there. That's the quarterback Sherman having to make the tackle. He's looking for Dave Schaefer on the fade pattern. Right about now, Schaefer falls down. Yep. Yeah, and just trying to plant himself. The ball's right, right into the defender's hands. And now you're going to see the quarterback come from your right to make the tackle. And you're going to see the mud fly into your living room right now. Look out. Oh. That is what we were showing you in the first half, how bad it was. And that's the worst part of the field right there. As the players towel off on the sideline. Here comes Konarski. There you see the turnovers one apiece now. Cato goes in motion. Hand off. And the, you see the Maples trying to strip the ball loose from Dave Seaman, number 41, for Kimball. Not much of a gain there. Yeah, I think they're going to have to keep trying to strip the ball. I think they know that that's their best shot at getting field position. And I think he, even though there's six minutes left in the third quarter, you're already at the point where the clock matters because you're not going to, unless you get lucky, you're not going to have any one-play drives. You're going to have to sustain something, and you're probably going to need about four shots to get two touchdowns. Back up, guys. on their way now. 
Second down and long. And it's Sitterlet again. Sitterlet gets some good yardage. And they keep try trying to strip that ball loose, but the ball is in the worst part of the field again on the playing field. There's Sitterlet coming off now. Let's take a look. And you tell me if you can tell who makes this tackle. Their, their numbers are, uh, are gone. I believe it was 44. Yep. That's a um, so one four. Yeah. You see Sitter Little on the sideline. It's going to be pretty soon. We don't even know what his number is. Konarski. And he's brought down hard by Pete Butler. And a big loss there. Butler with the set. Give an assist on that to Morris. And Morris fought off that blocker, made Konarski roll out, and that allowed Butler to get in there and get him. And there's an injured player right in front of the Kimball bench. And it is Konarski. I, I, was say, I think it is the quarterback. Take a look as Konarski goes down, and what happens? Oh, that's a shoulder. Right on his oh, shoulder. Man. You know, and even with the soft field, that's a tough hit to take. Terry Powers is worried all year about him playing linebacker. Losing his quarterback that way. Well, this is just a regular old play, but we've already seen how Konarski runs. He's, he runs like a linebacker. He's a tough guy. He doesn't do any of that uh, soft quarterback stuff. He might pay for it there. There you see Pete Butler who brought him down. Let's take a look again. Water. From up above. Water. And he gets on his shoulder. And then what happens is when you have that additional weight from the other player on there. That's, that's just painful to watch. The shoulder pads aren't going to help you too much. No, and that's also, you know, that's potential shoulder separation, potential collarbone injury. Uh, a lot of bad things can happen in that situation. And it's just a regular old football play, but, you know, you just land kind of funny. If Konarski, and it looks like he won't be able to come back, we don't know. They, they're going to have to be able to sit out now because the punting team will come in. But well, Yeah, but he's one of their linebackers. If he's out, I know. Andy Martin would be the quarterback. So we will see what happens. We'll take a break right here in the third quarter. Kimball leads 14 to nothing with 521 left. We'll be back. Rumor has it, Comet Burgers is definitely the place to be seen in downtown Royal Oak. After the party, out for dinner, just looking for cold soft drinks, great burgers and fries, milkshakes or pizzas. Comet Burgers is the place to run into just about anybody. Uh, excuse me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Even old what's his name. Comet Burgers, they're out of this world. And welcome back to the TCI game of the week. Kimball leads 14 to nothing over Seaholm. And we saw the quarterback, Konarski, go up in his arm. His elbow was tucked away in his jersey. And it does not look good for Konarski to come back here. We'll take a look at it. The punt by Murphy is a short one, but good. Oh, my. Because it goes right inside the five, and they'll down it. Talking about the uh, Seahawks special teams. Kimball's special teams have really made this happen for the Knights, and you see Konarski in a lot of pain on the sidelines right now. And oh, they're man. gonna miss him if he can't come back to I run the offense. I don't think you bring him back right now. You're up 14 nothing. Keep him out the rest of this game. Wor worry about next week. Yeah, Un just... Unless something comes up in this game where yeah, you need you him. get your backup quarterback practicing snaps right now is what you do. And right now, Seaholm is in the biggest trouble they've been in an all game. Deep in their own territory. And nothing to do but really run the ball here. Oh, and now and they have some movement on their uh, on their right guard out there, right tackle, I believe. Yeah. Just lifted his hand up, so that's half the distance. Now you're gonna be on the one. The one. Let's hear the call down on the field. Good ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Half the distance, repeat first down. Okay, we see the penalty yardage, four for Seaholm, 21 yards. Oh, that one right there. And that there. one just added there. <laughs> and uh, Kimball one for five, and the rain continues to fall here at Kimball High School. Joe mentioned at halftime when we were off, the best 0-3 team out there. Probably in the Kimball state Knights. of Michigan, yeah. I'll tell you, they're playing like they're 3-0 and tonight. And they've got Seaholm buried at the one. Good effort there, just trying to get the ball out of the end zone by Sherwood. Yeah, good tackle by uh, Nick High. Yeah, that's a name we haven't called. I wonder if he's in there for uh, 
for Konarski on defense. That might be. Kimball looking on. They would uh, love to come up with a big play here. Uh, already have come up with a big play by burying them deep. Murphy on a great punt. It was short. He pooched it. He knew what he had to do and just kind of drop it in there. And he did. And the Kimball return man, or the Seahome return man, could not even touch it. Uh, that's just, and he did the right thing. You're not supposed to catch it when it lands inside yeah. the tank. Rolling out in his own end zone, gets it off, and really just threw it away. It was uh, possibly intended down there <laughs> for either uh, Schaefer or Tallinger, either one. Yeah, in the vicinity of. And now you've got third down and a long 10, maybe 11. You probably tell me what number again. this guy is. Um, <laughs> that's 10. That's Schaefer. <laughs> I don't know. Old, I think it actually is, it, is. it is. Shaver. I did call it, but I just wanted to see if you knew, and you did. First downs, Kimball leads with 6-4 to four over Seaholm. Seaholm could use one right now, though. They've got third and a long third and ten at the one-yard line. A quick kick, and they get the punt good off, call. and a good call by Seaholm as they get no return. And Kimball will still get good field position. He's just at the 50-yard line, just inside Seaholm territory. But a good call by the Maples. They weren't going anywhere, Joe. And uh, good call. Take the return away, and I think Frazier knew that. That's why he called for it. Because I mentioned before, the first two points by Schaefer, Kimball let him go. And they got pinned deep. Then they started making sure that their guys would catch him and return him. That's where the Kimball's going to get ball closer to around the 30. Now that at least they're back to the 50, maybe the defense can make something happen. And you make the Kimball Knights, who are going to have Konarski yep. out there. Konarski comes back in. Make their offense keep going. And, you know, I don't think you try to, you know, you don't try to play dirty here, but if he runs with the ball, you better believe he's going to get hit. Tough quarterback. Yeah, Konarski back in there. Sends Cato in motion. Hands off to 21 Seaman. Dave Seaman stacked up. And not much of a gain there, if any. Gain of about a yard. And <laughs> you can't tell from here how much he gains. It's just <laughs> such a mess out there. You see the cheerleaders putting on their rain gear as it's uh, just a continuous downpour here. Uh, a little heavier than a mist now. It started out to be a little mist at uh, halftime, and now it's coming down a little bit harder. <laughs> Cato in motion. Konarski handing off to Nelson. He was spun around, wouldn't go down, and then finally the Maples said, okay, well, if you're not going to take the first hit, we'll all bring you down, and they do. I don't know if that was Wallace or Goodrich. You can't really tell from here who gets in there first with that you hit. couldn't even tell if you were down on the field who that Exactly. Was. But spins him around, and then uh, a couple other guys from Seahole get on it, too. I believe that was 65 down there. No, there is no 65. So, so it probably wasn't hard there. to tell. 69. 85 was in there, Morrison, but you could tell him just because he's tall. Todd Fenton, I believe, was down. Third now, and 12. Cato open out in the flat, but that's all he'll get is maybe half the yardage uh, that they need. Adam so Ritter. Fourth and about four or five. Yeah. Adam Ritter was an important tackle, and earlier in the game, it was a missed tackle on Cato that allowed that first touchdown. This time Ritter sizes him up and makes sure he goes down. Forces the punting situation, and again, I think you, I think you put the punt block on if you're Seaholm. They almost got in a couple of times. Yeah, one of those uh, extra padded helmets there, like uh, Kelso for Kelso, the Bills. Who, yeah, when he used that's to right. play in the NFL a few years ago. That's right, the concussion uh, device. Murphy, who had an excellent punt last time, tries to do it again, this time fielded by Schaefer. And he's not down yet, across the 20 to about the 22, 23 yard line. So a nice return and a little breathing room now for the Maples. Exactly, manageable field position where you can open up the playbook a little bit more here. Trust me, that's Schaefer. You can see the number <laughs> on the shoulder. And right here he tries to cut. And does. Yep. <laughs> and Slides a little. Thanks to Chad Yurick from uh, Kimball, he was able to cut because Yurick was able to, to uh, get his foot on firm ground as he was holding it. You can see the rain now coming down even harder than we had mentioned last time. 
just a miserable day all day long. The players are probably wondering how we're going to play this game. And uh, they are. And they're probably having fun out there right now. I, say, I bet it's actually fun out <laughs> yeah. there. It's just more so for the Kimball Knights right now. But On the carry was Steffens. Chris Steffens, a sophomore fullback. Yeah, see, I don't know if Seaholm, what kind of trick plays they have in their book, but you might want to call them out soon. Alex Knapp just ran off the field, but I know he used to be a quarterback there. I don't know if they have any uh, goofy plays there where you throw one to him, let him throw the ball, but they might have to resort to that stuff yeah. pretty soon. They have to get some trick plays in, something going offensively. Sherman takes the handoff, goes to the air, and in and out of the hands. Of I guess he was turning real quick, the fullback, and that again. That's Stephens, 46. Stephens. The fullback again. Let's take a look. It's almost impossible to see these Stephens numbers. I think Stephens starts turning before he has the ball completely. Yeah, I think it throws there. It's a good pass and uh, a little high, but you really oh, you got to okay. catch that. He uh, he was not positioned right to catch it, but uh, if you do have a lot of Sherman rain in your eyes, there. yeah. So third and a must down here as you see the clock at 117 here in the third quarter. Sherman drops back deep, throws deep, and intercepted. Intercepted back there by Martin, Andy Martin, number 16, and he gets it inside the 40-yard line to about the 38 or 39-yard line to see where they mark it. And you got a couple of flags on the field, and at least one of them went down after the turnover. And see home now the second turnover of the game for them. Let's take a look. Well, again, Sherman's looking downfield, and his receiver slips. He's going right over the middle deep. And again, right about this point is when his receiver slips a little bit. Second time. That allows the safety to just sit back there and play center field. And again, there are two flags on the field, and I saw one of them go during this return, which would probably mean a clip or a hold on Kimball after the change of possession, so they'd have the ball a bit deeper, and probably in their own territory. Yep. Preliminary indication shows that. That's what the ref signaled. So Kimball will get it further back, but uh, still good field position for them. And they go into their own territory, and it's just outside the 45 and about the 47-yard line. Well, now, the, now the Sea Home defense has to force a turnover. You, they've got one minute and five seconds left in this quarter, and then the fourth quarter to get two touchdowns and two extra points. They've got to get the ball back. They've they need, they need time, they need the ball in yeah. their possession. We talked about how important that first touchdown was for Kimball and how Seaholm was struggling, really seemed like to try to get that. Look at this, Nelson on uh, the first down carry comes out across the 45 and into Seaholm territory, close to the first down. Let's see if he gets it. Uh, he might be just short. Yeah, they're gonna call second down. You see Nelson. Just burst of speed, I'll tell you, he got some real good footage, seemed like. Even on this uh, well, carry. Look at the blockers, though, knocking the Maple defenders back on their heels. You've got cornerbacks and safeties making the tackles. That means that you gained yardage. And as you play on this side of the field here, the conditions get even worse. It's Seaman on the carry. He gets the first down, and he's close to the 40-yard line. And again, this is the kind of game that's frustrating for any team to lose this, because if you're Seaholm, you're looking at it saying, all right, they scored on a 70-yard play a three-play drive, and the other one was a 30-yard drive that there's just this big pass on fourth down. Other than that, neither team has sustained a drive. There hasn't been any long 10-play, 80-yard drive by either team, and, and you're not going to have one in this, in this weather. Nelson checks back in for Kimball. Pretty good run to get him close to that first down. He goes in as the tailback. Kanarski calls the signals. He's got two tight ends, and he drops back. And he throws, he's open, Martin for the first down inside the five yard line. Oh, he was so wide open, he, he, he was open about 10 yards before then. He can actually just have plenty of time to let it go. And, uh, Joe, we're now calling this is a, a lot of numbers drive. here tonight. Andy Martin, we haven't seen him at receiver. He comes up with a big play here. Yeah, and again, you just can't say enough. Good pass. What a good job Tight Kanarski spiral. is doing. It's hard just to grip that football out there, and I know they're switching balls a lot, but still, he's got 180 yards passing in this weather. And there's the backup quarterback, Andy Martin, going in at receiver. 
and uh, doing a great job as he snuck out as the, t uh, the tight end position and went right down the field. That'll end the third quarter here at Kimball High School. The Kimball Knights lead 14 to nothing, have the ball inside the five, and we'll be back right after this. I'm the king. The rock and roll? No, coupons. I'm Mike Gauthier. Some people call me the king of coupons because nobody brings you bigger savings than my market share coupon book. Having trouble saving money? Then do what the Trip family does. Carry the book, Mike's market share coupon book. You'll save thousands on things you use every day, like eyeglasses, oil changes, and cleaning from companies you trust. But you can't save unless you carry the book. Remember, you'll save a king's ransom using my market share coupon book. Welcome back to Kimball High School, where the Seahome Maples are having a tough time against these Kimball Knights, and the Kimball Knights are inside the five, knocking on the door again. They lead 14 to nothing, and uh, time is running out on uh, Seahome, even though we have a whole quarter left, Joe. Yeah, and just a second ago, we were talking about how no one had sustained a drive. Well, this time, Kimball's sustaining a drive. This is a legitimate offensive drive. One big play that we just saw a second ago. But this is a, this is just a good drive. This isn't based on a turnover or a Seahome miscue or anything like that. This is Kimball taking it to him in the fourth quarter. You mentioned called a lot of numbers. Uh, Terry Powers has a lot of tools to go to. That time they went to number 16, Andy Martin, the backup quarterback, playing a tight end. This time they go to Sitterlet, and Sitterlet comes up with a nice game, but uh, not enough for the first. I don't think he's too worried about it, though. Yeah. You're second and goal at the, what, the three or the two? Yeah, I shouldn't say not enough for the touchdown. And they go to second and goal, not much. Three, about two or three, three yard line, yeah. yeah. About three or four, actually. And there you see pretty much the entire field is like that. Even though you see green out there, don't be deceived. The handoff to the tailback, Nelson, and Nelson trying to muscle his way in. No whistle yet. And finally, the whistle, and I don't see a signal. <laughs> he wants the touchdown. The official's not going to give it to him, but they're going to have third and goal about six inches from the goal line. Nice burst of speed again by Nelson. He's just getting some good, good carries. Getting some good blocking, too, and now he's using his legs and getting a little momentum there, and the rest of the Maples are trying to keep him out. Yep, just couldn't cross the plane. He's just shy of it. It is just about an inch away from the goal line. I mean, and they're going to, I believe they're going to go for it if they don't get it here because the worst thing that happens is Seaholm gets the ball first and 10 inside the one. Timeout called by Kimball. They're going to talk about this one now as they have third and about an inch to go to cross that goal line. And there you see Nelson, six carries for 30 yards. Pretty good uh, day for him, I should say night. Terry Powers talking to his offense now. Konarski, Nelson, and his big offensive line that has helped so much in getting these guys free. All right, you see this? That's not ours. That's it's, uh, maroon and white. Fox or uh, NBC? Or? No, that's Doug Frazier's thing. Seaholm coach, he discovered every year, you know, they play Groves in the Silver Dome, and so every year he could put a camera in the end zone, and he found that he was getting a lot better view of the field from there, seeing stuff on both sides of the line, talked to a landscaping company about trading advertising in the program and a few other things in exchange for use of their bucket truck. So they try to use this thing at every game. They've still got cameras above us with that sideline view, but this guy up here who's cold and getting rained on, he's taking a, the wide angle that you see sometimes in the NFL. That's what you have to walk in if you're on the sidelines, is that, folks. Is that the master angler? That kind of looks like fun right now. That's the master angler. Man. He's used to that stuff. And there's there's Doug Frazier. This is uh, this Mr. Mr. Modern in uh, high school coaching. He's got computers, video equipment, all that stuff. Now that truck you said is from a landscaping company. It just happens to be the same colors. As... Oh, I think they uh, painted it. It used to be green. Oh, uh, there we go. <laughs> Let's go down to the play here now. Third and about an inch. Kanarski takes it himself. I don't know. No whistle. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, he got it. And they give it to him. Konarski on his second dive for a touchdown. And it's now 20 to nothing in favor of Kimball. Well, Joe, <laughs> not uh, not what you had predicted, but uh, no. Kimball is really impressing everybody here. I thought Let's this take would a be a much closer game. And here, Konarski just follows his line in there. And you got to figure he, he'd get an inch out of this. And uh, somewhere down there, the ball's over the goal line, and now it's 20 to nothing. Probably going to be 21 nothing here. 
The extra point by Phillips. Oh, it is blocked. So the extra point is blocked with 10.36 left here in this contest. I was thinking, you know, if we were at Seaholm, we could find this out, because I know in their program, they have every kind of statistical thing you could ever imagine. And I'm wondering, when's the last time that they've been shut out? That's in their program somewhere. But I know they haven't been shut out. I don't know if they've been shut out I'm in the 90s. I'm surprised you don't have that memorized. I did all the work, too. I'm surprised you don't have that memorized. <laughs> It's been a while. I think Berkeley's the last team to shut them out, actually. That's like back in 90 or 89 or something like that. Six plays, 53 yards, Joe, 229 off the clock. One yard run by Konarski. We talked about a good drive. That's a and great still, drive. Still only took 229 off the clock, but they didn't have that long of a distance. But it's to go. six plays, you know, yeah. that, that wasn't any two play things or anything, yeah. or there wasn't any luck involved. It wasn't turnovers or any of that stuff. Forget to tune in to the Master Angler. As you see, the Master Angler himself right there. As uh, He doesn't really want to call himself the Master Angler, but he features Master Anglers. You, you think he likes the new fish sandwich at McDonald's? You know, they got that new one. Oh, that, yeah, that just unveiled today, deluxe. I think, yeah. Yeah, because that's, to me, fishing is going to McDonald's. They're not one of our sponsors. Comet Burgers is one of our Do sponsors. Do they have a fish sandwich? Comet Burgers, well, I think they have a tuna melt. Oh, well, that's fish. If there's one person that knows, uh, it might be our producer. There's Konarski, who uh, picked up his second touchdown of the night, the one-yard run. And there you see Mark Gomez, the host of the Master Angler, just doesn't know why he's out there standing in this mud. Should be out there fishing somewhere, trolling maybe. He would fish in this weather. He would fish anytime. The kick by Murphy, taken at the 10-yard line. Schaefer returns it out across the 25. Good tackle by Sean Sitterlitt. Came up and tripped him. Tripped him Take up. A Take look. a look. You'll see Sitterlitt get the ankles. The correction, that was uh, 28. And uh, Sherwood on the return. Well, it was Sherwood, but it, uh, Sitterlitt just grabbed him by the ankles and tripped him up. Still, he got it out to the 25-yard line, but long way away, and now you need three touchdowns. That's, uh, that's a lot to ask for. First and 10 at the 25 for Seahorn. High formation. Both of the receivers split. Sherman to throw. Catch. Has him. Did he catch it? Yes. Is that Schaefer? I guess so. Looks like you can't tell it was. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, that is. Number 10. Schaefer got it. Good catch a little behind him. And again, it's so much harder to adjust your route in that part of the field. Just shy of the first down. Of course, Kimball right now, I'm sure, is in a bit of a prevent defense, so it will be easier to get these passes off. Their big thing is don't give up the 80-yard touchdown pass. We'll give up eight and nine yards all day long the rest of the way. Again, pro set. Take the draw, and he's down. He just heard footsteps and getting in there, providing the pressure with 66, Scott Lance, and he was coming around the left side of Sherman. And Sherman saw him coming, and I think he tried to uh, elude him a little bit. <laughs> and you're not going to elude anybody in this weather. Watch his feet go out from under him as he's getting hit. Great job to get in there and watch. Just tries to elude him, and his feet went flying, and it's over. Good sack. Good pressure by Kimball, and it goes from second and two to third and eight. Third and eight now for Seaholm, and uh, a big, big play right here. They need this conversion. Sherman to throw, has time, steps up in the pocket, and that just slipped right out of his hands. Yeah, it wasn't Intended there. there for Schaefer, it looks like. And Schaefer's limping off the field. Yeah. He didn't get hit. I don't know if he cramped up or maybe turned an ankle, but he's gonna he's gonna have to be the punter if they if they indeed punt here. I'd, I'd say start, what the heck, go for it. Yeah, I started running now. Although, well, They're you are going to punt. I'd say you punt for it, but I don't know if it's point differential that becomes a tiebreaker later on in the year for conference titles, or is it just points scored? And if it is point differential, then you don't want to give Kimball an easy 25-yard uh, drive. So Schaefer to punt. 13-yard line. That's off oh. a beauty, a beauty. Lands at about the 34 and then rolls inside the 25 yard line. A great punt by Schaefer. In these conditions, in any conditions, that would have been a great punt. Again, that's, uh, that's the guy that most everybody says is the top kicker in the state of Michigan this year. 
And he's more known for his place kicking, but that's a 49-yard punt. And uh, that's, that's above his average. You get 49 yards in this weather, you're not getting much roll. It's a good job. Unfortunately, you don't want your punter to be the story of the game. Hey, Joe, your favorite show, Roadshow Video, can Absolutely. be seen right here Thursday nights at 9 p.m. right here on TCI 63. you got to watch this show now and, because uh, Beavis and Butthead's not on for the rest of the year. We have had th th these outfits that they're wearing here, or rather these... Uh, that's last year's style. The Mona Lisa here and uh, Henry VIII. That, that's last year's style, but we've had a lot of requests for that. That's why it's still on there. There you see one of the hosts of the show. Yeah, watch Bubba this. Wicker. First play here from scrimmage, and they stack it up for... Yeah, See home, a good play. They replaced Beavis and Butthead with Ren and Stimpy. I say go with Pat and Bubba. That's right. Seaman on the carry, frustrated, you can see. Yeah. Because he oh. can't watch most show <laughs> video because uh, he's too busy studying. <laughs> he's not frustrated over the play that they just, no, I, was just I don't think he cares right now about the yardage. So they're just trying to run time off this clock. That's right. We are in the fourth quarter at Kimball High School. Konarski handing off to Nelson. Nelson trying to twist and turn forward, but sneaks through for a couple of yards. Third down and probably seven yards coming up for the Knights. And you're the fastest uh, set of four downs uh, Kimball will have. Absolutely. They don't come up with anything here. You're going to see him run it again, too. They're not going to risk throwing an interception that can get run back or anything like that. They're going to take time off the clock, run the ball here, run the play clock down to the last possible second, and then punt it on fourth. Clock at 7.45 left in the game. Third and eight. Power eye left. And they go to Nelson again. Nelson trying to break it outside and does. Nelson with the first down out of bounds at about the 40. Now you don't have to punt it on fourth. You get the first down, you can run four more plays and take another minute and a half or two minutes off the clock. And uh, you just see the momentum with the Knights. Now Nelson following his blocking. And he gets the first down right there when he eludes Ritter. He's got the first down. But the only thing he did that Terry Powers wouldn't like is go out of bounds, but he had no choice there. I don't think he's going to stop and <laughs> keep his balance in bounds. They mark him out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Yep, 38-yard line. It looks like Sitterlet is back in there, that tailback. And again, Nelson gets it, cuts up field. He'll have the first down again. And Nelson continues to come up with these big runs. What they're doing is they're trapping right up the middle, yep. and instead of running it wide, he just cuts right up the middle. I'll tell you what, and there you, it is. You know, up until There's this the trap. You see 70 pull. Yeah, up until this quarter, we were talking about how they hadn't sustained any drives. Now, as they're trying just to take time off the clock, they're sustaining another long drive. This, if they keep going, would be a 76-yard touchdown drive. And I don't see any signs of the Maples shutting them down. At this point, they're showing more endurance, and obviously, there's a little more enthusiasm and momentum on the side of the Knights. And Total yards there, that shows it, Joe. 251 to 91. That's pretty much domination. This time, Sitterlet gets it, trying to bounce it outside, and good pursuit down there by number eight, Alex Knapp. Looks like he got in there that time. Yeah, Alex Knapp, one of the uh, better all-around athletes on the uh, Seahome Maples team. Again, he started out as a quarterback four years ago. Now he's a uh, defensive back, receiver, does a little bit of everything. And here he's able to stop Sitterlet for a... Uh, well, I guess for no gain, it looked like maybe a loss, but it's no gain, second down and 10. Again, the refs blowing the whistle and uh, helping big number 74 wipe his hands yeah. off there. All right, again, they go to Nelson this time, waiting for him. It's big number 52. And that was uh, Jason Heath, the senior 180 linebacker for Seaholm. And that time they were ready for, well, it's the same play that's been run at him the last couple of times. And this time they made an adjustment. They were able to stop him. Heath holds on and gets a little help from a couple other Maple teammates. And once again, you've got third and long. And I think still, if you're Kimball, you don't think about throwing here. You run. The worst thing that happens is the clock still runs on fourth down. Kimball taking their time in the huddle. Third and 10 coming up. 
And off to Sitterlet, the tailback. He dives forward and not a bad game, but not the kind you want on third down. Yeah, that's all they really expected, though. He made a nice move to avoid a loss. And I think yeah, the last time when Nelson got the first down on third and six, that was a nice bonus. This is the next best thing. He doesn't get the first down, but he stays inbounds, which means the ball is not going to be punted until there's less than five minutes left in the game. It's uh, that's not bad. You're probably going to pin the Maples deep. I'm sure the Maples will have a, a punt block on rather than a return. And the uh, punting team comes on just under five minutes left in the game and you heard Konarski come off the sideline. I don't know if you heard it. He said, we did it, coach. And I think what they tried to do is hang on to the ball to get it to, to five minutes. Well, I think he's also talking about we did it. We won a game. Yeah. Yes. You know, talking to Terry Powers before the game, he said, you know, the schedule, you, know, you can't complain too much about it. Because it's, it's tough. That was a tough start. Yeah. And this is a much better team than that record reflects of 0-3 coming into this game. The punt will wind up at about the 22-yard line. That's all, that's all they want. Yep. Let's go, and again, you, know, you start out with Clarkston, who was a playoff team last year. I think Kettering was. If not, they were they were right there. I know they were a playoff team two years ago. Troy, playoff team last year. Seahome, a playoff team last year. They haven't had a break yet. And there you see uh, Konarski sitting on the defensive end. I, I would think he's probably done for the night. No point in having him out there at all. They were able to take four minutes and 21 seconds off the clock on that last possession. That's really all they needed to do. They need to, you know, you don't need to add points. And I think Doug Frazier knows, hey, you know, let's get out of this game, see if we can do something positive here in these last four and a half minutes, but we'll worry about next week. This team will go to two and two. And Kimball will go to one and three after this one. And here's a nice run for the first down. And taking off was Stacy's. Steve Stacy's number 24 sees his first game. And one of the things you're looking at, if you're seeing now, Kimball's one of those teams that moved up to Division Two. As you see, uh, a nice gain here for the Maples and a first down. Two losses probably gets you in the playoffs. So if you're Seaholm, you, you basically play every game now like you can't afford to lose it. Maybe three, you can still sneak in. If you're Kimball, you flat out can't lose another game. This is a good start for them. Seaholm's got to break this two-game losing streak next week to stay alive. See the clock, 4-10 left in the game. In there also at quarterback. You see quarterback and another nice run by Stacy's. It is Alex Knapp in there at quarterback. You mentioned one of the finer athletes on the team. Yeah, Alex Knapp's a, uh, he's a senior now. He actually, as a freshman, had to come up to the varsity for one game and start at quarterback four years ago. And uh, I, don't think he, I don't think he really enjoyed it back then. Now it's a little different. Yeah, I don't know if he's enjoying this right no. now. They're on the, the bad end of the 20 to nothing score. First and 10, Knapp handing off again. The tailback, and again it's Stacy's. And now you just get, you know, get some guys some playing time. You know, you, you like to get everybody playing time in blowout wins, but you also have to get them in there in the blowout losses. And it's something you know, make everybody be a part of this too, and make them learn about it. So they all feel a part of the loss, so that next week and the rest of the year they go and, uh, you know, try to uh, remember how much it hurts. And guys like Brad Kusick in there take this and say, all right, we prove we can win. Let's at least go six and three and. Let the chips fall where they may on the playoffs. In motion, Miller. And not a good sign there for Seaholm as they get sacked for a loss. Let's take a look. Well, now you're going to have <laughs> blocking just wasn't there. And uh, now you've got third down and long. And uh, Stefan's on the carry that time. And I don't know if you go for a passing play here or not, or you're just trying to run the clock out yourself and get out of here. They, which they may be doing. Yeah, I, hey. I wouldn't doubt it. No. There's really nothing to be gained, I don't think, by uh, scoring here. Third and long, you saw that. Back to throw, and look at that. Well, that's his man. The receiver down there, and that was uh, Meller, J.C. Meller. And now you're going to have fourth down in about seven or eight. And are they going to punt again, or are they just are they going to go for it? It's not going to matter. I don't think Kimball's going to score. Here, Knapp able to get the completion, and I guess they are going to punt, but with a different punter. Nice tackle down there. 
wrapped him up and threw him down. That's clean jersey back there waiting to punt. So Schaefer is not back to punt, but a good one nonetheless. And taken again by Ronan. Ronan has got a nice job on taking these. And he almost uh, he almost saw pay dirt at that time. And that was that was the punter who made the tackle there, and I think it's number 14, Scott Dixon, who did it. And you're right. If I think if not for Dixon, this is another touchdown for the Knights. Because you don't have your first team out there. You've got some backups, and he's thinking, maybe I can take advantage of this. Well, here he just some makes one move. He's there. He's on his way, and you're going to see the punter Dixon come right up there and trip him up. I think, I think Ronan got a little too fancy with the high stepping there. I think he got he got a. Uh, Joe Doman in there at quarterback. Backup quarterback 12. in for the Knights. Joe Doman, the quarterback, and uh, you see some more fresh jerseys in there too in the backfield. Center let goes in motion, and look at this. Big gain, it looks like Seaman, and it is. Number 41, Dave Seaman on a big carry there. Look at that. There's now that's some mud. fun. There's some mud. Take a look at Seaman, right up the gut. First man through. That's right, we talked a second ago about him not having a whole lot of fun on a one yard gain. I think he had a lot of fun on this one. Nobody touched him. Just a great blocking play by the Kimball Knights. And Seaman and a nice carry across the 50 into Seaholm territory at the 44. This time, Nelson has a nice job in picking it up, but uh, it was looked like his knee went down. Exactly, and the officials knew to blow the whistle. I don't think they absolutely want to see somebody get get drilled at this point in the game when it doesn't matter. Right here, you're going to watch oh, his left knee, his knee down. Right there. He's down the minute he picks it up. And then pays the price, too. Clock ticking down, under a minute. We're at 50 seconds left. Kimball Knights. Doman, to give it off to Nelson. Nelson, still on his feet. And finally whistled down, forward progress, got him to about the 40 yard line. And that might be the last play of the game. This is probably a situation where the official will wait till that clock says 25 seconds before he places it down. Let's take a look as Nelson, tough little guy, will not go down. Uh, he wants to keep getting those yards, and you, know, you never know, he might be able to break one long. Really impressed with his yardage, uh, and really the Kimball Knights doing a good job of shuffling in some players and giving everybody a break. Chris Nelson at 5'7", 160. Well, I'll tell you what, too, their the Kimball defense really picked it up, too. You know, Seaholm had some decent yards at halftime. They haven't gotten anything in the second half, and they're not going to have to snap this ball. Kimball Knights victorious, their first victory of the season, and proves that they are not an 0 3 team, that they are much better than 0 3, Joe. Yeah, and that was just uh, victims of their schedule, and really, that's a team that eh, you don't want to say they should have won. I don't know if you can say you should have beat Troy in any situation, but they definitely had the opportunity last week. This week, I think they came out on a mission. They weren't going to allow themselves to lose after going 0 3, and I think Seaholm was the, uh, <laughs> the unfortunate victim in that situation, and I think. We saw tonight, yeah, the weather played a part in it, but Kimball was just a better football team. And they make a statement by shutting out the Maples 20 to nothing. That's the final score, and the Kimball Knights victorious. Their first victory, they go to 1-3. and three. The Seahome Maples go to 2-2. Two and two. We'll be back to wrap things up from Kimball High School right after these messages. On the Master Anglers, we bring you the hottest fishing action around the state of Michigan. From tips and techniques, to advice and stories from the pros, the Master Anglers gives you the info you need to catch the big ones. Plus, it's just plain fun. That's the Master Anglers, Thursday nights at 8 on TCI Channel 63. If you wish a video cassette of TCI Sports, the cost is $25. Send a check payable to TCI, along with your name, address, and the names of the teams that played in the game, to TCI Sports Videotapes. 
4500 Delamere Boulevard, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48073. Remember to tell us which game you wish to receive. And thank you for watching TCI Sports. Welcome back to Kimball High School, where the Kimball Knights are victorious over the Birmingham Seaholm Maples, 20 to nothing. And Joe, they really made a statement tonight after going 0-3 to shut out the Seaholm Maples here tonight. Yeah, and again, we were talking at halftime off the year, the best 0-3 team in the state. Well, now they're probably the best 1-3 team in the state. These yardages were a little closer at halftime. Kimball just killed them in the second half. The one thing that stands out to me, though, is up here. You can't. I can't believe anybody could get 180 yards passing in this weather. 110 yards rushing, that's possible. And you can see the rushing was really pretty equal. Turnovers didn't really affect the game like you'd think as much as special teams did, especially on Kimball's side. First downs, well, at the end, when they were trying to run the clock out, they really piled up the first downs and four touchdowns. That's four first downs right there for you. And time of possession. Or three touchdowns, I should say. Yeah, and time of possession uh, pretty close, uh, despite uh, Kimball having the big uh, advantage in yardage. Kimball scored one in the uh, first quarter, uh, and that was a uh, Aaron Cato 74-yard touchdown catch from Konarski to make it 7-0. Then it was 14-0 when uh, Konarski had a one-yard run to uh, end the uh, second quarter. Then in the fourth, we got our last score. It was Konarski on a one-yard run again. The extra point was no good, and it made it 20 to nothing. and that's where our st score stood. Yeah, and Konarski just had a great game, 8 for 13, the one touchdown no, no uh, interceptions and scored two. He led the way for that team. Okay, next week, don't forget to tune in. It's Troy Athens, the Red Hawks. They were 3-0 and coming into tonight's contest as well. And they'll be going up against the Rochester Falcons. We saw the Falcons against Lake Orion. They have their work cut out for them against the Red Hawks. Yeah, the Red Hawks, and they, they'll be 4-0. They were playing West Bloomfield, and that would be the biggest upset of the week if they were to lose that game. They are really the turnaround story this year in Oakland County. You know what? That's to be expected. They had a lot of juniors last year. That's something that you see. When you have a lot of juniors and sophomores, that next year you're going to be a good team. And they're going to... They might take themselves undefeated up till that Troy game. Okay, that's Saturday and Monday at 8 p.m. Want to acknowledge all the hard-working uh, staff here at TCI for getting this, uh, getting all the equipment set up in a heavy downpour earlier. You think it was raining bad now? It was just uh, coming down so hard earlier, and a great job they did. For Joe Abramson and our, our entire TCI staff, I'm Dave Zorin. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week from Rochester. The final score: the Kimball Knights 20 and the Birmingham Seal Maples nothing.